Welcome Trailblazers to today's tutorial where I'll be showing you a web to lead, how it works, its benefits, and the basics on how to get it set up. web to lead is a way for organizations to acquire new leads directly into Salesforce using a website form that captures visitor information. Directing visitors to a form on your website where they enter information about themselves and their interests in your offerings is an easy and powerful way to turn them into leads. A well-designed form can capture key information about visitors including demographics and specifics about their interests in your products and services. This marketing and sales technique is called web to lead So let's take a look at what one looks like so you can get an idea of the sort of fields you want to include in yours. Here at SkyPlanner, we use web to lead on our company website, and although every website is different in layout, the general design of the web to lead forms are similar. Some websites might have it on their front page, and others, such as ours, might have it on a contact us section, such as here. Scrolling down a little bit, we can see we have a good example of how a standard web to lead form looks like. You can choose a wide variety of fields to display and capture on your form, and we'll take a look at that later. But here's some that we can use as examples, such as first name, last name, company name, email, phone number, and a small section that the visitors can use to describe what it is that they're looking for. And below this, down here, is a security check that is asking for the visitor to repeat the code displayed on the right. This is used as a helpful means of filtering out spam or fake submissions and not actually saved into Salesforce. Salesforce lets you easily create web to lead forms and the information is automatically stored in new lead records in your org, which can then be routed to sales reps. After a visitor has submitted the form, you can redirect them to other pages on your website, send automated email follow-ups, and start them on customer journeys. Now that we've seen what the form looks like once created and set up on the website, let's take a look at how to get that started. From your Salesforce org, you're going to go into Setup, and then in the Quick Find box, you're going to type in Lead. This is going to give you all the necessary settings that we'll be using. Before creating the form itself, it's important to make sure that the leads that will be generated are routed to the correct sales rep, so let's click on the Lead Assignment Rules first. I already have a couple of rules set up here, but let's create a new one so we can see what it looks like from the very beginning. We click New. And from here we can give the rule a name. Next chance, let's do standard 2. Or 3. Only one rule can be active at a time. So selecting the active checkbox here will deactivate any other existing rules and make this one the new one and the current active one. So let's do that. Let's save. Next, we can click on the newly created rule and click New to customize its filters. Sort order is just to specify the priority order of this rule, starting with 1 being the highest priority and going in ascending order 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. In this case, let's do 1. Next is the criteria which we can use fields on the lead object to filter out specific types of leads, such as leads from a certain country, city, certain company name, maybe even annual revenue, and many more. Take a look at that here. You have the option of using the center field filters or using a formula that evaluates the true. Selecting that here. For this example, let's just select a criteria. Annual revenue is greater than or equal to, let's say, about 1 million. Finally, we have the user which will be receiving these specific leads that will be filtered out based on the criteria here. An email template can also optionally be chosen here when the user is notified via email. So let's just select the user now. I only have one option, but you may have a whole list of different users to choose from. And hit save. In this main page, we can now see the newly created rule and edit it if need, if need be, or create a new one. From here, we can also see the order of the rules and we can reorganize them as well by simply changing the order number and selecting reorder. The next important setting before creating the web to lead form itself is the auto response setting. The setup is very similar to the assignment rules with only a couple of fields changing. Let's start by clicking on auto response rules. Click in new. Giving the rule a name, to standard 
and the active checkbox behaves exactly as in the assignment rules, so only one can be active at a time, and activating this will deactivate any other. So let's hit active. And save. From here we can click on the newly created rule, click new, and we'll see a form very similar to the previous one. Here, sort order is used the same as before, in which new leads will go through the filters based on the first specified. So let's just select one for now. Next is the criteria. Here the criteria is basically exactly the same, in which you can filter by fields being an option as well as a formula. So, field, formula. For this one, let's do city equals to Miami. Now comes the difference. Here we can specify what name as well as the email that will appear on the auto response email that will be sent out to the visitor after they submit the form. The email here does have to be either an organization wide email or a user verified email address. So for now, we're going to select Sky Planner, my own email. And then down here, you can specify the email template for the email that will be sent out as a result of this filter criteria. So let's just select one and hit save. As you can see, the process for creating auto response rules as well as assignment rules are very similar to one another with only minor differences toward the end. It's important to make sure that these rules are created before setting up a web to lead email so you can filter out any desired leads and they're routed to the correct sales rep. The final step in creating a web to lead process is well, creating the web to lead. So let's see how that's done. Clicking on the web to lead here will take you to the startup page. Before creating the form, there's a couple of settings that can be modified. You select edit. And here we can see the options to enable or disable web to lead. Make captcha a requirement when creating a new form, as well as the default user that will be receiving the leads that come through the form and the default auto response email that every visitor will receive upon submission. These last two settings here apply only to those leads that do not meet the rules that are set up on the assignment rules or the auto response rules from earlier. If a new lead meets any of those criteria, then they are automatically routed to the specified sales rep and the email response instead of the default that is set here. For now, we'll leave the settings as is and just hit save. Back at the main setup page, you can click the Create Web to Lead Form button to get started. Up first is the fields to display on the form itself that will be returned back once the user submits a new form and a lead is created. The fields here are all fields from your lead object and include all the standard as well as custom fields that can be filled out normally. A few set of standard ones are already pre-selected such as first name, last name, email, company, city, state and province. But you can select as many or as little as you want. Though the general idea is that less is more since you wouldn't want to overwhelm your visitor and discourage them from inquiring altogether. Next is the return URL. If you'd like to redirect the visitor to a specific part of your website after they submit a form, you can enter that URL here. After that, we have the capture key pair. It's good to have this in place as an extra layer of security to make sure that the leads coming in through the form are real people and not spam or bots. For this though, an API key is required. And then lastly, we have the language in which the form will display its field. Here we have a few standard options that come from Salesforce. Since I don't have a CAPTCHA, I'm going to go ahead and select to not include it so that it can continue. But once all this is to your liking, you can click the generate button at the bottom and the code for the form will be given to you. This is the code that will be used by your web designer so they can insert the form into your website and they can even further customize the layout and design of the form so it's a good idea to work with them to get the right look and feel that fits your company. Well that's it. With just a simple three setting process you can set up a web to lead form and have a new and exciting way of capturing leads. Thank you guys for watching and let's keep blazing the trails ahead.